viewers and random Doctor Who fans, Donna Noble. Just, just Donna Noble. The swift kick in the backside that knew who needed. Finally, we were given a companion that wasn't swooning over the Doctor every five minutes. She treated him like a friend. She challenged him, questioned him, had a laugh and enjoyed their adventures together. In short, she was an actual companion. And if anyone deserved a figure, it was her. Fortunately, character options agreed, and in 2008, a figure of Donna was released. Now, the packaging for the Series 4 figures was greatly upgraded and much more streamlined. Now, the figure was sealed entirely in plastic as opposed to the card backings of the Series 1 to 3 figures. The design of the Time Vortex had changed around the edges, and the section at the bottom displaying the picture and name of the figure had been given a hexagonal redesign. The packaging still retains the police box window display theme, but the background is now purple, which was the colour code for the Series 4 figures. So here we have Donna, wearing her Planet of the Ood outfit, and I have to admit the face sculpt is pretty good. Really good, actually. It definitely does look like Catherine Tate. The proportions of her facial features are almost perfect. The shape of her cheekbones, her mouth, her eyes and nose are all great. Even her forehead is impressive. A sentence I never thought I'd say, but here we are. Her eyebrows are present and the hair sculpt is fantastic, some of characters' best work. The paint on the hair is a nice mix of ginger and brunette to bring out Tate's hair colour, and the mould replicates her curled hairstyle nicely. On the torso, she is sporting her thick brown overcoat, which is made from soft plastic. The lapels and lining have that thick fur design, which is complemented by the sparing addition of silver and grey-blue paint. You can see the toggles hanging down at one side of the coat, and at the back there's a large hood hanging down, the sculpt of which is perfect and looks like it's made of actual folded material. Of course, characters' patented wrinkles and creases make a return, but sparingly, which is great as the coat in the show didn't actually wrinkle too much due to the material it was made from, so instead the coat is wrinkled in certain areas that are affected by the shape of Donna's body, and are flatter in the areas that are hanging freely. The seams from where the coat is held together by its stitching is also present and adds additional realism to the figure. Taking a look at her neck, you can see a little necklace hanging there, just like in Planet of the Oud. The pattern on her dress looks great, not only has the design been printed onto the plastic, but also moulded on in certain places, which works well in certain lighting conditions. The legs look good as well, with much more of that wrinkled and creased texture present, and just like the Martha figure, the paint apps really make it look like the figure is wearing jeans. At the bottom of the legs, some basic black shoes are present, but again, lack a peg hole. And hey, look at that, legal garb, what a surprise. So overall, I'm highly impressed with the detail on this figure. Taking a look at articulation, you would think that due to the hair sculpt, the head would be locked in place. But, due to it being made of a soft plastic, this allows the head to perform the 360 exorcist twist. The arms have a full 360 degree joint at the shoulder, another 360 at the bicep and tricep, a 90 degree bend at the elbow, and a full 360 joint on the wrist. Don also has full 360 waist articulation. The legs can kick forward to 45 degrees, but can't do the splits due to the mould of the lower half of the dress. Fortunately, the legs can spin the full 360, and there's also a 90 degree joint at the knee. So, for articulation, this figure's great. As for accessories, Donna doesn't come with anything, which is a little disappointing. I always like a figure to have an accessory in some form. There was a re-release of the figure, which came with a part of the build a vest before figure from the Unicorn and the Wasp, but technically that doesn't really count as an accessory, does it? If there's anything you would like to have seen Donna come with accessory-wise, let me know in the comments section. Personally, I would have loved to have seen her with all that luggage and those hat boxes she takes on board the TARDIS at the end of Partners in Crime. So, overall, what do I think of this figure? Well, it's all kinds of excellent, plus being able to own a small plastic figure of Catherine Tate is never a bad thing. After all, I doubt a Lauren Cooper figure will ever enter production. The detail looks great, and the face sculpt is the closest to its real-life counterpart than any of the other companion figures. The articulation is fantastic and allows Donna to be put into various action poses when up on display. Honestly, of all of Donna's costumes, I wouldn't have picked the Planet of the Ood outfit for this figure. Don't get me wrong, it's a great outfit, but I would have preferred a Donna figure sporting that brown leather jacket look from the Stolen Earth and Journey's End, which is what she wore in all of the Series 4 promotional pictures. Additionally, how awesome would it have been to have seen a version of Donna released wearing her wedding dress from the end of Doomsday and The Runaway Bride? That would have been sweet. But, as it stands, we only ever got one version of Donna Noble in figure form, and with its brilliant attention to detail, just like Donna herself, it's a real diamond in the rough. So that does it for this review. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there are countless more reviews online. Thank you again for watching, and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye.